Amber, what are your thoughts on Comic Sans? Please, Amber, tell us. Normally, I analyze strictly handwriting, but I've been noticing a lot of interesting fonts in movies, posters, logos, and everything. Also, people have asked my thoughts on Comic Sans, but first, if you could check that you're subscribed, I would really, really appreciate that. There isn't an abundance of handwriting channels on YouTube, so invest now, press the button. But now, I've got a great lineup of fonts. At the end, we'll finish off with Comic Sans. So let's start off with a bang. This font has intrigued me for a while now. Now. It's not necessarily a font, it's kind of a logo. Maybe you've seen his videos before on YouTube. He's interviewed all kinds of people to spread awareness. He seems super nice, he's a little emo. Let's look at him. Anthony Padilla. I've got it here right now and just just, just take a look at this, at this font for his logo. Mm. All the people who have watched my videos in the past and know some traits are probably looking at this like, oh. I mean, there's not a lot of uniformity to any of the letters, which would indicate instability, unpredictability. But what I'm looking at specifically is notice how the baseline descends and even the size diminishes. Like the writing starts out large, but with each letter that he writes, the size gets smaller and smaller and smaller. How variations in size work is if you write something bigger, you think it's more important and it has value and deserves to take up space. And when you write something smaller, it's the opposite. And whoever wrote this, and I'm assuming it was Anthony, but regardless, the writer is clearly trying to have enough strength to take up space and be confident, but that's just something that they can't maintain. If it is Anthony's writing, then I would suspect that this is how he feels towards himself, given that this is his name. Another thing, the descending baseline. Descending baselines are an indicator of pessimism and depression. So yeah, I hope I hope Anthony is doing all right. I mean, he should totally do a I spent a day with handwriting analyst or whatever, but, but yeah, no, I genuinely hope he's all right. On a lighter note, let's look at the next font. Next, I'm looking at the Chuckle Sandwich podcast logo. If you're not familiar with it, it's a comedy podcast hosted by Ted Navision. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. Also has Schlatt and Charlie. And I, and, I, and I love Schlatt. I really want to look at his handwriting because he's so fucking crazy. Let's look at their fonts. So the font slash logo thing that they have going on here, it has some very striking traits that are showing up. So to me, the most striking thing about this handwriting is the changes in slant. Even if you're a beginner in graphology, if you know a few things about slant, it can really tell a lot about the writer. Usually a writer will stick to one slant and only deviate from that slant if the writer feels a certain way about what they're writing about. So given that information, now take a look at the slant in Chuckle Sandwich. You see that the slant changes all the time and not just each word is a different slant. It's every single letter has a different slant. So when slant changes happen this frequently, that would indicate to me extreme moodiness, unpredictability, just basically chaos at that point. Also, I find a writer whose slant changes this much also are just people who experience emotions very, very deeply. And that's what causes them to come off as so moody and chaotic. But another trait that we have here is the letters that are overlapping with each other. And you can see in the thumbnail, the overlapping is happening in between the lines as well. So we call this tangling. Tangling, put simply, means confusion, confusion of thought. So I talked about the quote-unquote negative traits, but we can talk about the positive traits that are happening here as well. So the font has a fair amount of roundness, which indicates like friendliness. I mean, it is all caps. Don't skip the camera. It is all caps, which is very tough, hyper-masculine, unable to grow emotionally, way to write. But given everything we've said, we tally up all the things that we talked about. We've got, got confusion, masculinity, chaotic, friendly? Yeah, that sounds like the podcast, honestly. Next up, next up, next up. We're gonna look at a font from a horror movie. This is the font from the new Candyman reboot. I've seen the original. I haven't seen this new reboot yet. Give me some time, okay? I saw this poster in the subway and I was like, ah! <laughs> I just found this font very interesting from a graphological point of view. If you look at the font letter by letter, you see it starts out as very much this like aesthetic printing with these intentional angles. So that would indicate precision, wanting to make things aesthetically pleasing. But there are these intensely sharp angles that come out of nowhere and even like crash below the baseline at points. So angles indicate anger and aggression in writing because it takes a lot of muscular tension to go in one direction and then switch directions and go the other direction and switch directions. It physically feels aggressive. Even if you're not holding a pencil and you just do these motions with your hand, with your arm. It's a very aggressive, almost violent movement. And when you look at this poster, you see these sharp angles all over the place, but notice how it doesn't have a specific pattern to it, or like it's not uniform. You see both angles that are very sharp 
as well as angles that are very blunt too. And you might be thinking at home, oh, okay, so less sharp angles, doesn't that mean less anger? Technically, yes. But if there were only sharp angles, no blunt ones, then the writing has some sort of uniformity. You know what to expect from the writer because there's a specific pattern. But because there isn't a pattern here of when the angles happen, not only would this indicate aggression, but it would indicate unpredictable moments of aggression. So to me, that's like the perfect fun for a slasher horror movie. And another small thing I saw, notice how the first time a letter breaks the uniformity of the font and goes through the baseline, it's on a downstroke. And when you have downstrokes that taper really quickly like this, like really sharply like this, it's like a jab or like a slash. It's a huge indicator of, of aggression and violent and cruel tendencies. And that's just because when it's on a downstroke, it's just like, again, when you do that movement with your hand, it's just such a violent stabbing motion for the hand to accomplish. And the other thing that's interesting to me is that the next time a jabbing movement breaks the uniformity of the font, it's not another downstroke, it's an upward slash, almost like the font is jabbing down and then slashing upwards like like the Candyman with his creepy little hook. So yeah, I just thought the attention to detail on that font was just pretty smart. Also, the letters themselves are pretty compressed thin, which indicates narrow-mindedness, uptightness, but moreover is just an expression of tension. You can try even writing at home if you try to write really compressed thin like this, you'll physically feel more tense and like you're holding everything together than if you relax and let your letters breathe and take up space. And I'll also point out the, the filled in-ness of the A's and the D's. I know this was probably more of an aesthetic choice than anything, but in graphology, if a person like loops in their A's or has tangling in A's or O's or anything that's supposed to be like a round circle, it indicates deception, hiding, secrecy. It can indicate lying as well, just hiding the truth in general and not being open. So, Leah, are we gonna talk about Comic Sans yet? Okay, 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 we will. Oh my god, okay, okay. I just want to very briefly talk about a font that annoys me far more than Comic Sans ever could. Can you guess what it is? Uh, <laughs> this font bothers me so much. Okay, it's the fucking Manscapes font. I hate it, I hate it. Oh my, oh my god, I hate it so much. Like, and I hate that YouTubers whose channels that I watch keep getting sponsored by them. Like, I get it, get your coin, I get it, it's hygiene. I get it, but like, oh my god, like I would probably get demonetized if I talked about menstruating, but you can sell like fucking, ah, and, and the product is just so intensely gendered and it doesn't even have to be, and I hate it, and, and the font is the exact same way. It's this like, all caps, hyper-masculine font that's super bold, so like heavy pressure, which in handwriting indicates like vitality and passion and, and drive and whatever, but also stubbornness and aggression and basically just toxic masculinity as a whole. It's like actually the font of toxic masculinity. Okay, let's talk about Comic Sans. Meow. Shall we talk about Comic Sans as a family? So the Comic Sans typeface. So the Comic Sans typeface was created in, can you come here? So the Comic Sans typeface was created in 1994 by typographer Vince Conair. Amber, stop. By typographer Vince Conair to be, <laughs> I made a whole little presentation about Comic Sans and Amber's like ruining it. Okay, okay. So the Comic Sans typeface was <laughs> So the Comic Sans typeface was created in 1994 by Vince Conair as the font to be used for a cartoon dog speech bubbles in Microsoft Bob, a Windows interface where a cartoon dog would <laughs> You're not a cartoon dog, Amber where a cartoon dog would, would talk to computer users. In an interview for The Guardian, Conair said, dogs don't talk in Times New Roman, so a new font was required. He was inspired by graphic novels where the hand lettering was similar to a typeface and created a font on his computer with his mouse, deleting and adjusting as he went. The font ended up not meeting the deadline for Microsoft Fob, but started getting used by office admins to write emails and was eventually included in Windows 95. So that is a brief history on Comic Sans. Wow, good job, <laughs> You're welcome. But that's not why you're in here. You are here because you want to know, Leah, what do you think about Comic Sans? Watch me get hate for this. I don't hate Comic Sans from a graphological point of view. I can tell you though why people do hate it. It's because it's the most human. Like look at the lowercase m, you notice how each downstroke doesn't have that perfect uniformity that you look for when you're typing on a computer. Also notice the capital I, like the 
the top and the base isn't quite parallel. Also notice the stem on the lowercase n isn't actually straight. Also the second stroke in the uppercase q is a bit too long and goes beneath the baseline as well. So there's a, there's a lot of imperfections about this typeface. I don't know much about typography, but I know that it breaks a lot of rules. But all these imperfect qualities that it has, these are all very human things to me. And as a handwriting analyst, none of those qualities bother me. But I understand that when you're writing on a computer, you're not trying to be human. If you were trying to be human, you would just write it yourself. Socially, it's not accepted, so you can't really use this font for like a funeral headstone. And I don't find the font aesthetically pleasing by any means. But as far as graphological traits go, I have no beef. Come here. Okay, that's what we thought. Thank you. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs>